as I mentioned, I want to talk briefly about looking at the org shape when it comes to file sizes as well, and some things that you can actually do with the kind of shape connections to save you a lot of file size if you are dealing with quite large uh, meshes. So what I've got here is I've just got the T-Rex from the Consum browser, and I've just subdivided it once, and let's just go and save it. I'm just going to save it, T-Rex. And if we look at that, we can see that it's basically one megabyte. It's thousand kilobytes. So let me now just add a cluster to it so that we can modify that. And let's see what this does to it. You can see it increased a bit, but it didn't actually increase that much. So I'm not 100% sure why that is. It seems like Maya is a bit better at dealing with the shapes in this case. Um, it might also just be a bit with uh, the cluster that we're using. But let's say that we now need to have multiple versions of this T-Rex in here. So I duplicate it out. You know, I just call it another T-Rex. Oh, Rex. And let's just save this file now. So I'm just going to say T-Rex T. And we can see now that even though we basically duplicated that what was in the one megabyte file, we're now up to three megabytes. And as you probably figured, that is because when we duplicated, we ended up with the shape org of that previous um, transform as well, or the previous object. So if we get rid of that, and if I now just, I'll just save over that T-Rex2. So let's remember that was, actually, I'm just going to save T-Rex2 clean so we can see it all. And you can now see that we've gone down a whole megabyte just on that. So you can see now we're getting a more kind of linear scale as we of the file size as we would expect. So that's, uh, again, it's something that's really, really important to kind of check out, especially if you end up duplicating a lot of meshes or if you're doing a lot of things. So if, if you're starting to have like very large file sizes and it takes a long time to open your file and all of these things, just checking things like this can be very, very beneficial for your setup. Now, as I mentioned, it's a bit annoying that the fact that we're, we're, we keep using the same kind of mesh over and over again, but we, we're going to get a, an increase in file size because of this, right? Because we're duplicating the same shape over and over again. So it's, it exists multiple places in the Maya scene. Well, there's actually something else that we can do. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these things. And um, actually that was a bit dumb. I'm going to open up my T-Rex just so that we just have that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make a cube. And I'm just going to duplicate that a couple of times. So now we got three cubes here as well. And I'll just save this as T-Rex cubes. And let's look a bit at the file size. So as we, we should expect from the T-Rex without the cubes, we've increased a tiny bit with this because we've added in more information, right? But as we've seen previously, what we can do is we can actually connect one shape to other shapes. So let's try and connect our T-Rex into, oh, sorry, into the other shapes here. So I'll just organize these a bit. Just make this a bit bigger here. So I'll do what we did before. World mesh into in mesh. Into here. And into here. And you can now see that we've got four T-Rexes in here. And each of them is their own individual object that we can move around. And now let's see that. So that's connected. 
so you can see we actually went down in file size from the cubes that we saved out. So we actually now have four separate versions of the T-Rex that we can, that we, that we have there, um, that we can now go and kind of freely modify, right? Because they're their own individual meshes. But of course, if I go in and I modify this now, that will, that will pass through to all of them. We can see now that if you end up doing a rig where you need to have a lot of duplicates of something, this can be an absolute lifesaver. Because even with this, we can, as I showed now, we can add these things in and we can add in, for instance, um, like the formers. But just before I do that, let's just see what happens if we disconnect these. So if I disconnect these, so now that we, we basically transferred this shape over to all of the other, and I'll save this again. So I'll, I'll just call that disconnected. And let's see now. Now you can actually see we've grown in file size. So now we're, we're getting back to that kind of original thing that we were seeing where we're actually starting to grow in file size because we're adding in more mesh data. But in terms of like the functionality that we have, it's still the same. So let me just open up the connected one again and just show you this. So I can go here now and oh, I can go in and I can add a bend or I can go in and add a cluster to this one and I can add in, I don't know, let's, let's just do it like a lattice, lattice. which it, oh wait, is it because it's out of, hmm, that's a bit strange. <laughs> that kind of caught me off guard there. Well, let's, let's ignore the lattice then. And let's just add in another uh, kind of deformer here. So, if I just do nonlinear and I'll do a sign, you know, we can change the amplitude of that. We can change the bend here. I don't, I'm not hundred percent sure what's going on with the lattice there, but that might be some, some weird stuff just there. I haven't tried that exactly. So you can see, we still have this setup now. And if I now go and save this and I'll just call it T-Rex cubes connected, I'll just call it rigged. You can see that we're still at a very, very low file size. Even now that we've added in even more data, you can see that the original single T-Rex file, we've actually only added not even 20 kilobytes. We've added 19. So this is something that I've definitely seen used in production. I've used it in production before. Um, and on specifically one show, it was an absolute lifesaver just because of the sheer size of the meshes that was being used and how many times they were being used and in, in the kind of di different simulation deformation setups. So I just want to cover that as well as like a really, really crucial thing as well. And again, this goes to a bit of what we were talking about previously is like, you can have your input shape and what you can do is you can have that shape be the main source of all that shape data in the scene. So you don't really have to store that anywhere else because now when, when this is being saved out, you know, we can actually, we could try and just have a look at the connected rigged. If we just open that up in, I've just got a notepad plus plus here now. But as soon as we now start to go down here and we can see, okay, we start out with our T-Rex and that has all of that like vertex data, you know, it has all of these different things and it just goes on and on and on and it, it, you know, it keeps going on here. And you can see like how much of this is actually taken up like most of the file here. If you see like how far down I'm scrolling now, we're probably now at the faces, I believe it is. And we keep going and we keep going and we keep going and 
Cool. Let's see now what we're getting to here. Where we have, this is it, right? So this is where we, cool. So we created our transform, our P cube one that's created. And then to create the shape, like this is it. That's all that's needed to create that data for P cube one. And then what happens afterwards is that if we just look for this uh, shape here, you can see not there. Let's keep going a bit. Uh, it's not there. Uh, let's just search for world mesh. So what I'm basically looking for now here is where it would connect into the, the, uh, the actual shape. So I'm assuming looking at here now, it's connecting into the, the org shape of that. So if we just see, actually we can just go here and find this again to find exactly what we're looking for. So what we're looking for is. The T-Rex shape should be outputting to a bunch of things here. So if we just look at that real quick here. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so th this is this is what I was uh, waiting for. So this is kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier when um, as soon as you start to add in deformers, the org shape won't connect in directly to everything. Um, but you can see here what's actually happening is that the T-Rex shape, the W, the world mesh, so it was uh, abbreviated, that's why I couldn't find world mesh, it's actually connecting into group parts. And you can see that happens on like the, the tweak here, like the, um, oh, let me just do that. So you can see that happens on a couple of different ones here. So if we find this group part six, you can see this is basically where the, the shape comes in. So it uses that pretty much as the, the original shape instead of uh, adding in all those things. So if we go up and we just add that, you can see now that even though we have a deformer on it, we actually don't have an org shape. And that's sort of because it's, um, it, it kind of knows that there's a, this input shape here. It knew that this thing was kind of connecting into it. So it then used that instead of creating a new shape org. Again, this can be extremely useful. It's not something that we'll probably do 100% more in the course. I, I don't think so. There's not a massive need for it, but it's a really, really important thing. And I, I think it's really crucial to understand this in the whole understanding how Maya deals with data is that you know, we, we can go in here and even, even on this, right. If I go and now if I paint like the, the weights of this, right. So that we now actually have specific weight data that can't be on, on a cube. And I'll save that out and I'll open up the, was that connected rigged? Right, it still works. Right, I'm, I can I can just clear now just to make sure like a hundred percent of that. Right, and you can see it's now it's added a tiny bit more because of we're just adding in per vertex data, but you can see it's still working. Cool. I just think that's really really cool and um, definitely something that can be useful. It's worth knowing that this doesn't necessarily mean that your files are going to load faster because it actually has to do like all the connections and it has to kind of traverse the graph to figure out all of these things. So I believe in the show that we use this on or like on the project and it actually led to slower load times because you needed to, it wasn't as simple as just reading data. You had to connect something and there, there's just like a lot more things connected in the scene, which means that you're going to have a lot more kind of dependencies, which can slow things down.